Hi guys, this is Matt from the James Bond Complex here to tell you that this video was actually recorded over a year ago. I apologize to all the people involved in the uh, recording, Edgar, Kyle, I apologize for the delay, um, but now I hope you enjoyed the final edit of Beers for Bond. <laughs> well worth the wait. Hello, dear listeners and viewers, and welcome back to the James Bond Complex podcast, the podcast where we discuss rejoice, drink up, and savor in the James Bond phenomenon in all its shapes, forms, and flavors, from Fleming to films, and everything in between. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, Matt, it's a delightful Saturday afternoon in early March. It's only minus 10 Celsius, whatever. Spring weather. Montreal spring weather. <laughs> uh, what are we doing this week, Matt? Um, this afternoon, we... Are, actually, this is the second time we're recording this episode. Is it? I blacked <laughs> out the first time from my memory. Spoiler. I don't know what happened to the footage. We still have the audio recording, but since it's, you know, it's a visual, uh, more visual uh, episode, I guess, um, we decided to, to reshoot it yep. and... Honestly, I think with our setup with the lights and everything, two cameras, there's a camera there, there's a camera that you can point at, the beer cam as I call it. There's uh <laughs> it uh I think it's in last October or November November? November. November because it was during a vacation I had and I went over to your place like on a weekday. Yeah. So And I, I came across a beer from a local brewery that inspired me at first i was like oh it's an oddity something you know just to mm -hmm. giggle at mm -hmm. but then i an idea formed in my head and um as you are want to do yeah yeah it's it's kind of my deal um there's a bond a beer that has a bond type of name um that we came across it's it's from la brosse brewery in point claire on the island of montreal giving a shout out um uh, by the way, uh, this is not a sponsor video. I bought all those beers because it's you know it's a beer video. But you know I I, I proposed the video. Uh, I, I I you know I was at a grocery store and I was keeping finding these these beers that have either direct or in some case indirect link to the Bond mm. franchise. And some of them just you know they, they have funny uh, pictures on on the beers themselves. Um, so w w w I picked, how many beers did I get? Ocho. Ocho, eight, eight beer. I don't even remember. Um, so we'll show them, we'll savor them. But since, you now I'm not a beer expert. And nor am I. You're, you're more of a connoisseur, but we need help. So, um, we're going to get help from, uh, Mr. Kyle Barbo, Barbo, Kyle Barbo. Québécois. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Isn't he? <laughs> That's a French Canadian name, by oh. the way. It's just a couple of friendly Canadians. Bonsoir, Matt. Bonsoir, Edgar. Ça va? That's about all the French I've got, even though I have a Quebecois name. But it's nice to see you guys again. I was just um, doing my taxes. Since we're doing a beer episode, and you're the most knowledgeable of all the Bond creators about beer, mm -hmm. uh, Oh, please, gentlemen, you could say this was a video I was happy to join. When we bring a beer out, you know, obviously you can't taste it. I, I, I can't even ship them to you. Uh, but you can tell us, depending on the type of beer, uh, what it's known for, what it goes with, you know, those types of detail, just for amusement. Um, and hopefully you still have a good time with us. We're big fans, Kyle. <laughs> Hi, from Montreal. Kyle from... It's uh, easy smiles and expensive watches on Instagram. On Instagram, just m massive followership. I mean, he, I mean, he. No, he's, we met him in, uh, in uh, last year in on, uh, Operation Snowfall. Snowfall. Yeah, we had lunch uh, with CN him Tower. on the Saturday. On a Saturday, I'm doing yeah. my best because this is like over a year ago at this point. <laughs> CN but, Tower. Yeah, CN Tower lunch. The 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 most expensive, but of course most delicious vegetarian dish I'd ever had in my entire life. It was, uh, well, you, we, you know, we are busy uh, enjoying the beers. Uh, Kyle is going to be doing something 
I don't know. Uh, does, he have any, does he have any guns? I know he's a big watch fan. He, probably, he obviously has some Omegas. You know, I'm sure he's going to keep himself busy. Uh, so. Um, target practice. Whatever, man. Um, let, you know, I feel like we've teased that, that beer mm. already. Uh, let's bond. Have one. The double up. Make sure to get a get a bit closer to the camera because this is the uh, bon, blonde James Blonde beer from La Brosse. I actually went to that uh, brewery I, when I saw their label with the No Time font. The uh, all they have you know images from uh, uh, taken inspired from all the movies. I mean, I had to buy it. It is a Blonde beer. Blonde beer. Kyle, would you regale us with details regarding blonde beers? Oh, all right. What you're drinking right now is what's called a Kolsch. Kolsch is a traditional German style of beer that's very light. Um, it's hoppy, but it's also very bright, crisp, and refreshing. German beers have to conform to a law that's called Reinheitsgebo that goes all the way back to 1517. And by this law, it stipulates that beer, in order to be legally classified as beer, can only be made from malted barley, water, hops, and yeast. Nothing else. Anything else that is added to the brewing process technically changes the definition of what the liquid is, and it wouldn't be beer anymore. But Kolsch is a German style of beer that conforms to Reinheitsgebot. Um, it's fermented warm, but not hot. Uh, like an ale, but it's aged like a lager. So it's tough to define um, whether a Kolsch is a lager or an ale, but what I can tell you is they go down really easily. Oh, has its kicks. Uh, it's a little, little bit bitter. Oh, a tiny little bit, but you know, as, as such a, a beer fan myself, <laughs> not with Kyle on the show, I'm not, I'm, I ain't, I ain't going to be playing that role, but um, I, I like it a lot. It, it bitter, yes, it's, it's maybe... You could maybe make the case that it's surprisingly bitter for a blonde. It's a little bit Daniel Craig. It's a little bitter. Yeah, actually. Uh. <laughs> I I have to say, um, you know, it's funny. Not too long ago, we uh, did a, like a three-hour marathon with uh, David Zeritsky about marketing Bond. This is really cool marketing. <laughs> blonde James Blonde, which is the giveaway of what type of beer it is. But that name is, it makes use of the No Time to Die font. So mm -hmm. clearly, this is a fairly recent beer. It's really cool. And and there's no copyright infringement here. All the images, the, the gray, pale gray cartoons in the background are, are not direct like, copy and paste of, of official like 007. It's like their own versions. I think they're, of, like, they're, they're so... You have you have a, a poison tipped uh, shoe. You have a motorcycle. You have a sumo wrestler. You have a bowler hat. I have to say, probably one of my favorites is the uh, little chair that looks like it doesn't have a bottom. <laughs> That's a good one. The sub, the deer. Uh, the deer is a good one the too. The tank for Goldeneye. But it's smart. Like it's all iconic imagery from the Bond. Like when you take a look at each of the individual images, you know exactly what Bond movie it's from, but it's generic images. It's, <laughs> you know, but, but what's fun, it's, it's, it's sort of, I, you know, I, I, how, how big a Bond fan is the person or the people that decided let's make a beer that's called Blonde James Blonde. And ah. it's also a pun on Daniel Craig's, uh, you know, remember Craig, uh, no, Bond not Blonde. I have, have, I that forgot takes to take me it. back to good old 2005. I just noticed uh, there is a No Time to Die uh, reference. You got a little broken uh, uh, kabuki mask. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, up there in the corner there. It, it, it's just enough that they can't get copy. Like. Yeah, it's good. I like it. Yeah. I like, but the, And by the way, the beer is pretty delicious as well. Beer as, no, it's, it's a blonde. Um, you know, Kyle probably gave us a... Tons of detail, but it's, you know, it, it, it's, it's, I had to, I, I think they're, they're still selling them, but I think they're selling them so well, you know, the, the, the marketing, the, the brand, the name, um, cause I've seen all their other beers in mm. local stores, mm. but this particular, uh, type of beer, I had to, uh, buy it online and send, send one of my agents 
to acquire it because it's I, I couldn't find one. There's there's apparently not a, a store not far from from here that sells it, but I I, I didn't have the time. Mm. So I know uh, the Spyscape experience in New York did did designate us as agent handlers, so we tell agents what to do. Uh, it doesn't matter. We have people everywhere anyway. Yeah. So. All right. So. Uh, do you want more beer? <laughs> you know what? Yeah, I do. But let me let me see if I can get one last. Oh, oh, oh. Do you have a straw? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not very gentlemanly. <laughs> no, <laughs> and we are. What are we? But not gentlemen. Oh yeah, we're we're. we're. I don't think this camera can see me. Um, so <laughs> what shall we? I think I know what you're going to tell tell me to do. I think I, I think I can see it coming, but I want to I want to hear it from you. Which beer are you dying to try out next? You know what? I feel I already feel a little bit uh, light. Oh, do you? Uh, I already feel, you know I feel excitement. I feel like a kid again. You know you know what? Um, this is five percent, by the way. We forgot to mention. Oh, five percent. Yeah, yeah that's probably a give a little indication of what indication. Yeah, um, you know, I, I feel like Roger Moore right now. Do you? Yeah, I, and you know what? I want to go to the circus at the same time. General, there's a bomb in that cannon. Sure, where else would a bomb be? <laughs> Great clown bit. I'm totally serious. I'm a British agent. What? For God's sake, tell him who I am. Kamal and Orloff double-crossed you. I saw them take the jewelry off the train. What do we have here? And this is where we're stretching. Obviously, the people that designed this beer probably don't even know that there's a movie called the Octopussy, a Bond movie, and it takes place partially for a sequence in a circus tent. But you know what? We're having fun. It's 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 not entirely Bond theme. I think some of them, you know, they, they Oh, they, some of them you see these thing and it's like how could they not have had Bond in mind when they designed this? <laughs> oh, the first one we did. But th there's another one I'm like it, it, I know what they're doing, but you know what? It, it, it's such a name that's uh, associated with the franchise. But regardless, with, uh, what type of beer is it? So this is from a brewer called L'Espace Public, Public Space. Where is uh, it from? It L is from... I think that's from Montreal, too. We will get a... C'est sur l'avenue Les Tourneaux à Montréal. C'était okay. site. C'était site. In here, Montreal, right Quebec. Here. Right here. Yeah. Oh, when, I, when you get some beer in me and we're just doing local brews, it's fun to get a little bit of... Uh, <laughs> so no, it's from uh, it's from here in Montreal. Uh, so it's basically uh, beer de cirque, which is it's no, but circus what, of the beer. What type of beer is it? This is a bitter beer. Does it say exactly? What I think type it's it on is? the front. Oh, it's a goose. It's IPA. Goose IPA. Four percent. Four percent. Four percent. Kyle, please <laughs> regale us on and details on IPA gold. Uh, goose. Right? goose? He, this is where he's. Hi, hi, Kyle. So it sounds like what you're drinking could be classified as a session IPA, but a goes IPA, that's a new one for me. It sounds like what you're drinking is a hybrid of two different beer styles, goes and IPA. But there has to be some good ones. Maybe this is one of them. We don't know yet. <laughs> we don't know yet. I have no idea what a Gus IPA is. Now, a Gus is a sour beer, and typically I like to pair sour beers with things like chocolate, whereas an IPA, being a more bitter beer, I like to pair with cheese. Uh, so a Gus IPA, the, that combination, that hybrid, I'm not sure what food I would put it with, but it sounds like a really interesting combination. Thank you for the information, Kaya. Much obliged. Cheers. Well, one of a kind. So that's uh... two of a kind. I got it mixed up. <laughs> mm. It smells very uh, mm. citrusy, fruity. That's a potent smell. It's really potent. Oh There's a God. lot of stuff going on in here, and I haven't even tasted it yet. Yeah, I it, did. Uh, it's it's it's. It this is. Has a, this has a bit of a. Sorry, this has a bit of a punch to it. Would, and not a bad thing. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. You said citrusous, right? Yeah, citrusy. Yeah, it's, it's, it's citrusy. It is citrusy. It's like they, they took a little bit of alcohol and, and they put it in like lemon juice almost. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know, I'm making it sound like the worst beer ever made. It's not that bad. 
I don't dislike it. Um, if I had to guess, uh, because Goes IPA sounds like a rather unique hybrid style, um, I would guess that a Goes IPA has a little bit of bitterness from the hop characteristics that one would typically associate with an IPA, but it's also probably fruity and tangy like a sour Goes normally would be. Uh, I would compare it to a carbonated grapefruit. And, you know, I, 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 it's too citrusy, a little bit too bitter for me. I'm, uh, it's, it's not a beer, like, different taste. I mean, I'm, I'm the type of guy who drinks uh, <laughs> Molsonax, Budweiser. Classics. Canadian and Quebecois classics. Heineken. I, I, Heineken. I love Heineken. Heineken's decent. I, Heineken is probably my decent. favorite like easy, easy brew. Mm, it's decent. I don't. I never understand. I know we got more cans to get to, but uh, I never really understood the... Uh, you know, you have your beer snobs. We all we all know one in our lives. Uh, from what I gather from 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 Kyle, he, he's, he's as far removed from being a beer. He's a connoisseur. He's not a snob. Well, I have to thank you for calling me a beer connoisseur rather than a beer snob. I appreciate the compliment. I don't want to be a snob. Connoisseur sounds much, much better. Uh, but we all know snobs, and I never really understood the whole Heineken, you know. It's really not that good. It's not because it's mass-marketed and mass-produced that it's suddenly not good. It's a perfectly leisurable beer. I have no problem enjoying a Heineken or two on a, on a good day. It, I, is it a, the most delicious beer ever made? No. Is it the worst beer ever made just no. because it's fun? No, it's a perfectly fine beer. <laughs> it's fine. I, I, I like my Heineken. But this is... It's not a Heineken. <laughs> it's, it's too 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 strong for my taste. Too strong? Interesting, okay. Not strong yeah. in alcohol content, but the taste is... It's, it's, it's wow, well, but... Sorry. It's a little bit, also, you know what? It's a little bit, um, gassy, <laughs> gassy, interesting. Yeah. You, is, there, is, there, is there a belch? No, I mean, no, 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 there's no belch, but it, it's 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 a little bit, uh, uh what am I looking for? Boy? Fizzy, fizzy, carbonated. The carbonation Carb- is yeah, quite the, strong, yeah. Carbonation is a little bit strong, also. It's usually that's the last step there when they put but, in, you the know, yeast what? And, so, I know that. You are enjoying it more than I am. And I know some people will say that it's their favorite beer, maybe mm. their favorite summer beer. Not for me. Not for me. Uh, I, don't, I don't want to throw them under the bus, but it's it's not my favorite. I'm sorry. What's the name of the brewery again? L'Espace Public. L'Espace Public. What's next? What's next? What's next is... Uh... From Russia with, with love. love. Wait, are you sure it's... Uh... You're one of the most beautiful girls I've ever seen. Thank you. But I think my mouth is too big. Oh No, it's not. <laughs> I do. Yeah, indeed, this is another... They, they had to know. They had to know. So... From this one is <laughs> Bon Baiser de Prague. Which is from Prague with love, or the friend. The little translation doesn't quite mean with love, but it's it's basically from Prague with love. Um, the little translation would be quite interesting in English. <laughs> but uh, so this is a Bohemian Pilsner. Bohemian Pilsner. Please, Kyle. What's P- please, Clyde? Kyle. <laughs> Clyde. Clyde. I didn't know we had Clyde on the show this week. <laughs> Uh, Kyle, uh, can you give us more information about uh, Bohemian Pilsner? Pilsners tend to be drinkable, refreshing, very smooth. This one is uh, brewed and packaged in Butcherville. I mean, Boucherville. Uh, <laughs> that's that's su- South Shore. Oh my God. It's all, I'm, I'm already uh, South Shore of Montreal, right? Boucherville. Mm, indeed. So Bohemian, it's a bilingual packaging So we'll, to, for, for our English uh, watchers. Bohemian Pilsner, both full-bodied in taste and subtly herbaceous. Uh, bon Baiser de Prague offers a romantic yet authentic Czech Pilsner adventure. We're going on an adventure, my friend. Ooh, this is, you know, more of a reference to... Uh, um, Casino Royale, it's it, it is the um, 
a beer that you know it's obviously from the bond title from russia with love bon baiser uh, de russie but at the same time pra prague pr prague 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 um i'm sorry uh, this is where they also uh, shot prague 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 <laughs> they also shot uh yay Um, cheers. Cheers. Here's to us. <laughs> mm, this is, you know, that's very smooth. Very smooth. Very smooth. Silky, almost. S -s -s very, very, very smooth. Mm. I can see me mm. drinking this anytime. Are you doing Daniel Craig? Um. <laughs> <laughs> It was funny. I was, uh, I was watching that movie with someone. What the hell was the context? I can't remember. But I was watching that movie with someone who had picked up on the fact that I do, hmm. <laughs> and when it got to that scene, they burst out laughing. I was like, I guess I do do that quite a bit, too. <laughs> Now, the question, do you think you started doing that before or after the, the, seeing the movie? This is where you grew up. Hmm. That is a good question. A question to which I'm not sure what the answer is, to be honest with you. One of those chicken and egg type oh, man, of questions. That's, that's a smooth... It's really good. It's fantastic. I love the packaging. Very simple. Sexy. Yep, absolutely. This, uh, by the way, is a 4.9. So we're going, going back up. Organic beer. No. Oh. Organic beer. Some of the tasting notes you're going to look for in a Pilsner are very uh, bready flavor. Bread, cereal, grain. <laughs> so which one do you want next? Let's see here. I know which one we're keeping for last. Do you? <laughs> uh, what's the, the, you know, the, usually you end um, a meal with a dessert. I'd, I'd end, because uh, 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 this, uh, this one... As cacao, cacao, Choc it's a chocolate uh, oh. milk beer. This one right here? Yeah, this oh, one. Okay, I got you, I got you, I got you. Where are you? Why do you hide? The moon record go. The version, I've seen, we, we got a little bit of, went into a little bit of copyright fun uh, this week during the editing for a YouTube <laughs> video. But last week, the episode we released last week, which was the Moon Rick novelization, I sort of anticipated that. So I'm not going to go with the Shirley Bassey version as the closer. And I got this version. It's... <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't I could not use it. It was for the Moonraker novelization episode. She goes, You love me. <laughs> <laughs> so this is um this is a freaking awesome packaging. Yeah, the packaging, you know, I <laughs> It's the final countdown. Uh, obviously, this nobody had any idea about James Bond when uh, <laughs> they they But when I saw it, I was like, I, I, I you know, I need to get it. Because I think I, initially I wanted only seven beers, but when you know, I saw that one, I'm like, I, it's too cool not to, 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 to purchase. There's, a, there's an astronaut on top of it. It's freaking awesome. And when the, this character takes off their helmet, you can go, a woman. <laughs> <laughs> so this is from Bose. Bo, uh, a, Bose, uh, which is like uh, beautiful, beautiful in French, but they um, they're located in Ontario. I actually went on a trip years ago to their brewery. It's really? uh, yeah, it's very uh, farmy, I guess. It's well, it's, it's, it's a tractor. Yeah, no, I know, but it, it uh, if I remember correctly, I think it's like an old farmhouse they converted into a brewery. Me. It's it's very I I like that brewery. It has it's uh, from our good friends Van Cleek Hill, Ontario. Yeah. Had a good time, you know. Oh, Kyle, uh, what's the, what's the again? The This is a pale ale. Pale ale. You're looking a little pale there, Matthew. Need some color? But do I look like an ale? N no, you. Kyle, look. Kyle, please, 
what's a pale ale and what what we should we I don't know eat with a pale ale or well, you know what goes well with a pale ale. And do you want to become an astronaut when you grow up? Pale ale is an extremely traditional type of beer. Ales are top fermented hot and they're called pale ales because of the pale malt. Because it's such an old style of beer, uh, there's a whole range of different tastes and varieties and subcategories of pale ale. So one might be different from the next in terms of color, taste, appearance, uh, but they tend to be pretty much amber or copper in color with a, um, a mild bitterness. Uh, they're very balanced. Some of them tend to be hoppier than others, but this is an approachable beer. Um, two of my all-time favorite beers in the whole world are both pale ales, Sierra Nevada Pale Ale and Fuller's London Pride. So because there are so many different styles of pale ale and subdivisions and subcategories, and it, it's such an old uh, beer style that's been around forever, what would you eat with it? Pretty much anything. Uh, think cheeseburgers, pizza, chicken, steak, meat pies, all of that would go well with a pale ale. It's a very ecumenical, all-inclusive style. Um, there's a little bit of a difference between an American and British hops. Um, American hops tend to be a little bit more aromatic than British hops, um, but the carbonation techniques can also make a little bit of a difference from brewery to brewery. There you go. You love me. Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! What the Muzzle top! <laughs> Did you shake that beer? Oh my God, I was not expecting that. Um, sensitive to the touch. Don't worry, Edgar, it happens to lots of guys. <sighs> Disaster averted, not. <laughs> oh, that was, uh, where did I, okay, you have the, okay. Uh, wow. Jesus. Well. <laughs> Jesus. There we go. Wow. We're good. We're I good. don't know if it's a defect, but whoa. This is this is just gas. This is popping. This I is, mean, th this is We're going past the stratosphere. Tab or man. We are going to the Moonraker. Oh my god. Be warned, these beers can explode. Plus de brouquet de bière. Wow. Are you gonna? Are you a bad pourer or? Uh, you're. You just. You just sabotage my beer. Tell you what. Give me a. Um, there. Are, you have a couple of extra glasses. No, no. It's 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 fine. No? Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, don't worry. Thank <laughs> you very much to our friends at Bose for your uh, <laughs> entertaining explosive <laughs> beer. <laughs> Oh my God. <laughs> Cheers. Hmm. Interesting. It, it, you know what? It's very similar to uh, Blonde, Blonde James, James Blonde. Blonde, yeah. uh, uh, Blonde, excuse me. It is similar to that. It has, it has that slight bitter twist. Uh, it's maybe a little bit more subtle. Maybe a little bit more subtle. Yeah. Pale ales tend to be mildly bitter, um, copper in color, and a moderate to low alcohol by volume pairs very well with all kinds of different foods. Of course, it, there's also the fact that uh, Bon Baiser de Prague was so silky smooth that now that we're drinking this, it probably, <coughs> excuse me, it probably heightens the fact that it's there's a bitterness to it. Um, but um, there, there's also something else. Like, can you read the description? Can we see what the because there's uh, there's not mm, oh balanced, hoppy, and crisp. Whatever um, ingredients: uh, Moonraker laser <laughs> asteroids, <laughs> uh, local spring water, delicious 
organic barley, malts, mm-hmm. organic oats. Uh, maybe the oats. Maybe the, oats? the hops. There's... No hops. What am I talking about? Hops is what. Uh, that's what gives the bitterness. It gives sort of the yeah. consistency. It gets rid of, I think, some unwanted microbes. It kills those off, and it adds the bitterness and the balance. I don't know. That it must be the type type of hops that are yeah. in there. There's um, no. It's not. It's it, it, it's not bad. It's just it tastes a tad different. It might be just the water also. I'll give you this much. It's distinct. Yeah. It's distinct. Uh, you definitely know. Uh, you definitely know. It's that not it's bad, color. actually. You know what? Want a little bit more? <laughs> no, no. I, I'm not going to... Uh, you know what? I, I'm, I'm going to have... Thank God we have reserve uh, glasses because uh, this isn't going away very quickly. But it's not bad. I think I like it more than Blonde Let's Blonde. Interesting. I don't know if I blonde like it more. Blonde. blonde James Blonde. <laughs> Let's Blonde. Jesus. If you don't mind. Oh. But... Um, Look, it's 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 the perfect package. It's, it's a delicious beer. Yeah, it's beautifully desi- designed. You get a you get a surprise when you open it. You know, it's <laughs> you might, fantastic. I, I kind of it might be the filtration because I kind of get a charcoal taste. You know, not a charcoal taste, but you know when water is filtered, but through mm. charcoal, there's a sort of mineral taste. It might oh, be because maybe. it's 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 the water. But there's there's something I, I you know what it's not bad it's just different. It's a great style of beer, very traditional, very approachable. Um, it's it's kind of what I would call an entry level to craft beer. Somebody who wants something a little bit more flavorful than a pilsner, something a little bit more flavorful than a light lager, might move on to a pale ale. See, you look at bo- blonde James Blonde. Malt, uh, malt, Sasquatch hops, water yeast, Prague. Now Prague starts with water. Let's start with water. Interesting that blonde James Bond doesn't start with water. Maybe I'm not an idiot. Usually, when you put ingredients on the labels, the first ingredient is the thing that is dominant. The most, yeah. Interesting. Hmm. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna go and get. A- I'm gonna get another glass. <laughs> the boot is uh, filled with uh, uh, for the next one. Um, yeah, no. So so far, that's not my number two. So far, I have a confession to make. I'm a member of Spectre. Spectre. Spectre, the special executive for counterintelligence, terrorism, revenge, extortion. The great cornerstones of the world, leaded by the great criminal minds. Oh, the it's a Correct. correction. Criminal brains. The successful criminal brain is always superior. It has to be. Why become criminal? I'm sure the West would welcome a scientist of your caliber. Oh. Spectre. What's what's in a spectre? It's an American IPA. Six point four. Oh, that burn oh. And this is one that they. Th- there's two versions. There's the blue one and the green one. I don't remember what's in the blue one. Um, I think we had the blue one when we, we did. We did recording. I, I, I remember us really liking that beer. I yeah, and uh, if I remember correctly, uh, one because it's for a um, uh, necessity. Uh, Here goes nothing. <laughs> Wait, 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 wait. Kyle, can you give us more information about what's it? What is it again? It is an American IPA. American IPA. An ordinary American IPA is known to be distinctly hoppy, um, golden copper color. Some of them can be a little bit hazier than others. It all depends on brewing process. And as I've said before, when discussing IPAs. They uh, they pair really well with cheese. So if you uh, if you need to cut the cheese, order an IPA. <laughs> uh, it's from uh, La Société Vero et Louis, oui. um, and it's uh, Veronique Cloutier and oh, ouais. yeah, it's their foundation. Jeez. A little bit of live noise. I actually verified that, but it's their foundation. And the blue one is for. Uh, people uh, that have autism. The green one, uh, 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 Asperger. 
Asperger. Watch out, though, because the alcohol content on a lot of American IPAs can be pretty strong. We enjoyed the blue one. Let's try the uh, green, green one. Welcome, Matthew. It's been a long time. But finally, here we are. Here we are. I thought you came here to die. It's all a matter of perspective. This is quite good. Well, it's, it's also all, all a matter of perspective. But <laughs> you don't like it? No, it's pretty good. It's very, it's smooth. We're sort of swinging yeah, back it's, towards it's uh, Prague. Smooth, but not as smooth as Prague. Maybe not. Maybe no. not. There might be a little bit of kick there in the back. Yeah, and that's the thing. There's a little bit of kick, but it doesn't overpower. It's not citrusy? No, no, it's not citrusy. Well, I mean, then again, what's going to be as citrusy as... Uh, the circus. The circus beer. But uh, no, this is pretty good. I like it. This actually might be... Uh, hmm. You put num uh, number two or number three? I think it's, I, I think it's a, mm, I think I'm gonna put number two. Are, are you gonna put it in number one? It might be my number one so far. My might mean I am my number one. Oh. Mm. Smooth one. Oh, actually, you know what? It might be. Um, uh, you know what? I'm gonna agree with you. It is so far the best beer. When it's secret smooth, comes out, but a little bit bitter. Mm. But not not nothing too. Uh, it's still. You know, it's actually better. Like it's not. It perhaps the the the, uh, the from Prague with love, Bon Bézier de Prague, is too smooth. I don't know, too smooth. I you want some bitterness with a beer. It's a beer. It's it's not. You know, unless you're drinking a, <laughs> as as my friend uh, Guillaume, friend of the show Guillaume, mm, mm. Uh, once said. Uh, you know, a uh, dessert beer. It's not a dessert beer. You want a little bit. You know. Bit beer, a little bit smoothness. It, it can be actually. It's funny that you mentioned that. Maybe would you consider uh, Bon Baiser de Prague because it's so smooth, a bit of a dessert beer? No, 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 no. no. You need you need something. You know, all, it needs to be accompanied with uh, something sweet mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. you know caramel, caramel, a little bit caramel, Car caramel, Car caramelish. <laughs> uh, so uh, we're we're down to two. We are down to two. Well, three technically. Three. I don't see that. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, do you want to? That that's uh that's from my uh, home turf. Ah, really? I, I found three out rivers. Trois rivières. Don't translate the name. That's stupid. Uh, so this is Grand Blanche. Uh, Grand Blanche. And what is it? Blanche Belge. Blanche Belge. 4.6. 4.6. Please, Kyle, what you know? What can you tell us about a Blanche Belge or a Belgian, a Belgian Blanche, Blanche, Blanche? Oh well, a Belgian Blanc or a Belgian Wit or Wit beer, White beer, Wheat beer is exactly what it sounds like. It is a White beer. Um, Belgian Wit has become a very, very popular style ever since Miller Coors. Uh, released a beer called Blue Moon in North America in like the late 1990s. Uh, but it's been around a lot longer than that. These tend to be a very hazy, cloudy beer, um, often brewed with lemon peel or orange peel and coriander. Sometimes they're even garnished with an orange or a lemon. So these beers tend to be pretty sweet, very refreshing, um, citrusy, I would call a Belgian wit or a wheat beer, white beer, um, Belgian blanc, whatever you prefer to use uh, as far as terminology goes, I would call this a very good first beer of the day. They tend to be very light, very refreshing, and fairly low in alcohol. Must be from your home turf because there's no English. Oh, there's no there, English. I guarantee it. Like a shark in the ocean. The Grand Blanche swims voluptuously Ooh. in your mouth. <laughs> in my mouth? <laughs> uh, come oh, on so, here, Steel so, Tooth. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it could be turn the ball. It could be also a license to kill. But, you know, I, I you know what I was thinking about when I saw I saw a shark in James Bond. Jaws. Jaws. 
expel them. Jaws, you obey me. Expel them! I was thinking about that the other day, the sharks of Bond. <laughs> Got Thunderball with some shark action. Uh, Live and oh, let f- die with some shark action. Four eyes, four only. eyes only. You, you got never shark. say never again. Never say never again. Uh, When's the last time we had sharks? Is License to Kill? It's, it's quite memorable, mind you, in License to Kill. Oh, absolutely. Well, the shark is almost the, the shark is a character in that film. He's shark, a cool shark star. is a plot device. In that yeah. <laughs> But you know that. Bring back sharks and bomb. Oh, I agree wholeheartedly. <laughs> Proust. Mm. Oh. Oh, this is extremely light. This is extraordinarily light. This almost has no taste. No, there's a there, there's a, a, a an interesting aftertaste. What is in that? This this actually tastes like a dessert. Yeah, I have seen. There's almost like a, a fruity so thing. Water, uh, malted uh, barley, of course. Wheat. Um, ci- there's citrus in here. Les agrumes. Oh. Uh, and spices. There's. Um, oh. Yeah, yeah, les agrumes. Puis les épices. Uh, they tell citrus what? and and spices. What spice do they have? They do not. That's a very interesting beer, though. I think they probably want to keep the recipe mm. a secret. So. No, I don't mind, but it's just that I. I It's probably the citrus and the spice that. Yeah, even their I'm little. Almost like pepper, I want to see. Their fanciful description doesn't, uh, you know, swimming in your mouth. It doesn't. Uh, it, it mentions their citrus in here, but not more than that. One of the most noteworthy, authentic Belgian wits is a beer called Hogarden, which most people, I'm sure, have heard of. Uh, if they haven't heard of that, then they would know, or at least North Americans would know of the beer Blue Moon, which is an American interpretation of the Belgian wit beer style. Interesting. I usually don't like Blanche, but this one? Yeah, no, I can't say I automatic. I don't gravitate towards uh, what is that? What, do you, what is that in English? White beer? White is that what it's called? Is it? Do, do Belgian beer? Or I think that's what's supposed no, to be called a Belgian, Belgian beer. beer. Yeah. Um, I don't gravitate mm. towards them naturally, but, but I, I agree. This one, it must be the citrus and the spices. No, no, of yeah. course it is. The, the, honestly, I think the spices are what makes the difference. I almost say like it, it tastes like pepper, but not overpowering. It's just a soupçon yeah. of pepper. Yeah, it's, there's a little bit in there. There's a little bit in there. It's interesting. Oh, it's, it's interesting. really interesting. Food pairings could go a couple of different ways with this beer. Um, Because they're sweet, you could pair like with like and have something sweet with a sweet beer. I'd go a different route. Um, Because it's sweet, I would go with something that contrasts it and maybe pair it with spicy food to try and get something to balance out the sweetness in a Belgian wit. You know, it's it's not going to be number one, but... It's not my go-to beer style, uh, but I do like it as a good first beer of the day because of its light, refreshing, sweet characteristics. And the young ladies seem to enjoy this style of beer. So maybe it is worthwhile keeping a few cans in your house. It, it, I'm trying to understand the shark And the citrus and the pepper. I don't quite <laughs> understand it's, it. Don't, 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 don't try too much. I think they. I, I think somebody had a shark drawing, and they need a beer to put on top of it. They said Grand Blanche. It's, you know, it's a Grand Blanche, great white. Yeah, great white. Sh- a cocarian <laughs> oh, A what? A great white shark. That was actually a little. I bit mean, too you're, you're, no, no, your Dalton is on point. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, dun, 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 dun. golden nail. And what is that? Oh, it is the golden nail. 
very simple, but I think it's just an, a pale ale, right? Attractive packaging. So this is a ale doré, a golden oh. ale, a pale ale, in other words, West Shefford. That's uh, Bromont. Dans les. Like. C'est brassé à Bromont. C'est brassé à Bromont. In the city in Quebec. Les brasseurs de West Shefford. Please, Kyle, regale us with details regarding uh, Golden Ale. Golden Ale or Pale Ale. Oh, I was just reading this for the Daniel Craig interview. What did you ask me? Oh, yeah. Uh, Golden Ale. Excuse me. So a golden ale is another subdivision of pale ale, which tends to be made with pale malts. In the United States uh, and in North America, we might call this summer ale. And sometimes summer ales are brewed with things like lemon peel or grains of paradise or honey, but they don't necessarily need to be. Um, I would pair a golden ale with a hot dog at a baseball game because of its summery, easy drinking characteristics. Strict rules of, uh, of beer tasting, uh, Goldfinger. Pass me your glass. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That really was just... You know, I just picked that one... Uh, is it yesterday? yesterday. Yeah, I, uh, no, the day before yesterday because uh, it's... Uh, It's Saturday today, I mean, tomorrow's, it's, yeah, it's th Thursday I bought that, and I was going, I went to two grocery stores, you know, looking for inspiration, the first one and nothing that inspired me, and this one, when I, it was in the corner, when I went to actually have it scanned, it wouldn't scan, um, really? yeah. It's, what was up with that? I don't know, I think it's either new or, beer. <laughs> it is, oh, cheers. Salud. I must say, so far, that's the best. Just look wise, I, I, I whoop, <laughs> drop oh, it's it. such a nice, rich gold. Yeah, really like the color of that. That is something. Are you with me on that one? When you, maybe not with a beer you you've had a number of times before, but when you're served your first glass of a beer you've never tasted before, what I do sometimes. I, as I put it up to the light to see, you know, what does it look like? I want to appreciate it. This has a beautiful, beautiful Glowden sheen yeah. to it. It's, it's absolutely extraordinary. It's almost glowing. Santé. Santé. Ooh. This is, this is a, a certainly on the lighter side. Yes. Doesn't have much kick. There's no, a, there's nothing in the aftertaste. Yeah, it's, 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 it goes it's, down. but it's not, bad it's not bad it's not bad it's very smooth very smooth but it's funny because we we tasted the prague um the prague earlier and it was smooth again you know when you start tasting so many not that we have that many but still we're at we're at our seventh you know when you start tasting so many beers it's fun because that's when you start to uh, be able to distinguish different levels of because this is sort of our Second smooth one, I would argue that uh, from Prague with Love is smooth, yes, but that has a little bit of boldness in the background. Uh, golden now is really just exclusively smooth. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's really not much. It's which is fine. I don't have a problem with it, but I might go can back. Can you can you read from the the sure. the, the can a little bit? See if so uh, this is another uh, unilingual so. An ale that uh, puts at the forefront the colors of uh, of golden uh, golden greens. Uh, it lets escape a a soft uh, aroma, uh, a soft honey aroma, and floral aroma mm. in your mouth. <laughs> uh, the beer wants to be easy to drink. Uh, The cereal is what imposes itself. But cereal doesn't taste that much. I think that's the thing. The cereal the imposes itself and, lesses, uh, and leaves a final, subtle uh, bitterness of, of, of the... Uh, oublon, there is a little... Oublon, uh, hops, there's the hops. a little bit of kick at the end. Oh, it's subtle. 
It doesn't get much more subtle. Than oh this. yeah, but it there it's there, but it, it's so smooth. I think it must be the Ani. Or the well, earth? we know what it why it looks like that all of a sudden. I know it's I know it says the color is supposed to be that like that, but it's it's really the honey. It looks like obviously it's more liquid than honey, but it looks like I'm drinking honey. <laughs> it does T truly, truly it does. Brighter. Who is that? Um, what is that one? This one is the uh, the bitter Englishman. But it, what and what type of beer is it? This is extra special. <laughs> Extra special bitter. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. God, do you have... <laughs> I, I, I haven't almost the impression they invented that term. No, it could very well be. However, I will say this. Uh, first of all, hopefully you're not too bitter. Hopefully you're having <laughs> a good day. Uh, nice to see you again. Ah, well, it's nice to see you guys too. And it's nice to be seen. I can't wait till the next time we can do this in person. And no, I am not especially extra special bitter. Not today. Uh, and I do like the ingredients, though. Oh. Dark mahogany plus toffee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, th that's the, the dessert beer I was referring to. Yeah, well, actually, those are, those, are, those are obviously the, the, the flavors. It's malt. Uh, you have uh, Cascade and Willamette hops. Never heard of that before. Water and, of course, little old yeast for the fermentation process. You know what I'm saying? So, it really was just the countdown. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know why the countdown just blew up. So did Moonraker. So. Oh. Hey. Oh. Hey. But this is, uh, yeah, it's very relaxing. It's very, very relaxing. The uh, alcohol content is 5.1 which honestly for a, a beer as dark as this is not that bad sometimes you expect the darker the beer the higher the uh, the alcohol your blondes tend to be a little bit smoother your darker beers your your maybe not your ambers but your browns the alcohol content goes up a little bit this is actually pretty respectable at a 5.1 you don't chug it but but it's pretty decent actually no this is uh, quite smooth it's sweet, especially sweet. I mean, it tastes like chocolate. A little bit of, with Apparently. a bit of a... Apparently they say toffee, but... Uh, but chocolate toffee, with a bit of a caramel, I was going to say. I, I agree more with the caramel than the, than the chocolate. I agree more with caramel. But, uh, no, it's it's very interesting. It's, it's I do, you know, it's... I, I, uh, this might actually go high. Uh, oh, my goodness. Save the best for last, apparently. Right. Uh, even better than the Spectre. Uh, I not, but the, the, where it loses, it, it's it's dessert beer. It's not mm. something with it's specific. It's really specific. really niche. When you say uh, beer, you don't think of this thing, but it's not bad. It is oh far from it. It is actually quite good. But like I said, it's it. You don't get. You, why am I even saying that? You don't get drunk with a beer like that. But when when's the last time you've gotten drunk? The closest I've been, it, it was probably uh, in, in in Toronto, and even then, I was just, you know, happy. But you, you, you require, you know, <laughs> some glasses, gallons of you. alcohol. Yeah, I don't, I don't require as much. I'm not the drinker I used to be. I couldn't tell you the. Uh, Maybe it would have been the online pokers with Emery, maybe. Oh, that Which was, was a while ago. That was a, almost like a year ago now. What year is it? Of all the beers, this like I said, this is a board game type of type of beer. A I would board game type of beer. Yeah, I would play board games right now if you had one, or even maybe not poker because poker you know, want something a little bit stronger than that. But you know, something relaxed, almost mm. very chill. Or oh, the Prague would oh, be the one. You know oh. what? Even even better. It's still. Right now, so there's still the pandemic going on. Mm. Um, it's still curfew, mm. but it does happen that you know you've been seeing this lady, and she says, "You know what? I'll, I'll spend the night at your place." And uh, you're not living in your apartment; mm. uh, you live in a little cabin in the wood, <laughs> and it has a fireplace. And 
you're just having the spirit mm. and you're some, 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 a little something 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 that's when you drink that that's very smooth like for for uh, uh somebody who's you know it doesn't like too like beer too strong mm. beer uh even though it's off it's a 5.1 yeah it's but some bad. people don't like the taste of beer this is this almost covers the taste of beer with yeah, the it's, toffee that's and the, the caramel uh, feeling this actually hides the taste of the beer we've had other ones today where I thought it tasted a little bit. They're all very good. Well, not different variations. They're all very things, interesting. Yeah, they're all very interesting. Uh, but I think they all did a pretty good job. Even the smoothest one, which I think was the uh, Golden Owl. Like, even that one, I, I wasn't necessarily under the impression that I was drinking beer beer. It was so smooth that, you know, you know a poorly, a poor beer, a, a badly brewed batch tastes like beer. If you know what you're doing, especially if you're a microbrewery, and I, 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 would, I have to think that if you're a microbrewery here or elsewhere, the idea is to distinguish yourself, to, to, to um, go against the grain, so to speak, is to, to come up with flavors and, and be adventurous and creative. And I think you know, the lineup we've tasted uh, the, this evening slash early, 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 late afternoon slash early evening, uh, it, it was a good example of, of the creativity of these microbreweries, whether it's sort of a little bit sweeter if you want to go down that route or very extremely citrusy if it's the circus beer. Uh, my personal favorite, the, the Spectre, which was that nice balance between uh, blonde softness with some character to it in the background. Um, it, it's been an interesting experiment this afternoon. Yeah, no, I have to, uh, uh, it just did not disappoint for an episode. My boss is in Reykjavik, Iceland. That is where Spectre's located. Cool. Ladies and gentlemen, I have an announcement to make. I'm buzzed. Uh, so the, this one actually has a fourth measurement bar. The Blonde James Blonde had three. This one has four. You got color, you mm -hmm. got bitterness, sweetness. But there's this fourth bar here uh, that, uh, for reasons I can't get into, I, I can't show. <laughs> the, the, the can mic uh, the can camera is uh, how many people do you have everywhere what he's everywhere everywhere he's sitting at your desk he's kissing your lover he's eating supper with your family what I know. and it goes from zero to inf infinity <laughs> do you, like the eight symbol on the yeah the it side? goes around the can that's how many people we have <laughs> Oh my God, M White, M White, who 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 owns this this? M White, M White is is behind this, yeah. Got his name right there. He's he been growing a very very beautiful. He sabotaged our our, our special can. He did. He Get did. I mean, we keep boasting about people everywhere, but like this guy knows how to get into the books we order on Amazon. He knows how to get into these Quebec microbreweries. It's he's everywhere. He's everywhere. Everywhere. <laughs> we do have people everywhere. Wouldn't you agree? <laughs> you really don't know anything about us. We do have people everywhere. Uh, www.thejamesbondcomplex.com, which also serves as the Tumblr account to this day. Uh, we're on Twitter at The Bond Complex. Facebook, The James Bond Complex. Instagram, at The James Bond Complex. Uh, you could, well, we're hosted at Anchor.fm. We thank them for their gratuitous services. Uh, if you care to watch us, which we hope you're doing right now, clearly we're on YouTube, rumor has it. Uh, search for the James Bond complex, subscribe, and tickle us with a thumbs up button. Cling! <laughs> 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 uh, you can listen to us on Spotify, uh, Google Podcasts, uh, Apple Podcasts, my old friends on iTunes, which is now Apple Podcasts. Search for the James Bond Complex, subscribe, write a review, and leave us a five-star glowing Golden Gun review, a five-star hopping Golden Gun review. Um, and Kyle. Kyle, Kyle. Kyle, where can you be found at? Where, where are you? Who, me? <laughs> Uh, just as James Bond always returns, uh, so too with the James Bond Complex, with another video at some point. At the time of this 
recording. I don't really know what the next video is, but we'll come up with something. I would have thought watching your TV shows was torture enough. Sur ce, toujours un plaisir. Merci à la prochaine. Uh, au, au, au revoir. Check this out, baby. See you next week. Hasta la próxima. Arigato matane. Gassam ham nida. Dam jue bogatsam nida. Ciao, belli. You know, I need to learn that in Klingon. Well, let's say au revoir. I have a suspicion we'll be meeting again. think the turnaround time on this is going to be short, do you? Well, I apologize. You're going to be spending quite a bit of time in uh, the editing room, Monsieur Eau Claire.